Hello traders, this is Anka Metcalf with Trade Out Loud and this is the weekly market outlook for the week starting with today. It is Sunday, March 10th, 2019 and we're just about four minutes away from the futures open. All right, let's begin with the Imini Dow weekly. Weekly has uh, had the actually first reversal this year, first week of pullback that came into the 10 exponential moving average and quickly moved back up. So it went way down uh, to a low of 25 to 46 and then it zipped up all the way back to 25,555 where it closed on Friday. Uh, so from the weekly chart, we could see that we're still standing on support. This is a confluence zone here deriving from also from the, these prior clusters that we've had through 2018. And in fact, all these highs from uh, uh, from February all the way through March and then again back in June. So this is a prior revisited area finding support right here and then price moving up just a bit. So relatively weak, uh, uh, weak, uh, should I say, of that we had last week. So let's continue with the, with the daily chart and see, uh, and see how we stand because when we closed on Friday, you could see here, we pretty much closed in a positive territory and all the indices, of, uh, all the indices have had a really nice break in the last 30 minutes of the trading session. So lunchtime, we had the rotation from the lows that actually continued in the afternoon hours. And we closed on a positive note for th throughout all the indices. The pullback in the mini Dow came to the 200 simple moving average and it actually moved higher. You can see here, this is a really nice hammer that we're setting up that actually set up last Friday. And if we're gonna manage to break above the highs on Friday, uh, we may see new highs that may continue throughout this week into the 25,750, 26,000 and back into these prior highs of the day. Turbulence zone still remains the area into 25,700 because we have a lot of resistance into this area from these prior lows, from this whole consolidation that took place the last weeks in February. And then this is gonna uh, be still a problem area. But if we uh, manage to trade over the 700, 7 to 800, that's gonna be the turbulence zone between 700 and 800. A pinch above that will assure nice continuation follow through to the 26,000. Now, don't forget that on Friday, we have the quadruple witching option expiration and typically a week before, and the week of option expiration is a little bit more turbulent. Now, this time around, because it is the quadruple witching option, uh, uh, option expiration, uh, it's going to be a little bit more turbulent and it's often like this every quarter and uh, uh speaking about uh, uh speaking about you know end of the quarter we're also going to see um uh, starting not with the, this week but next week we're going to see some window we may see some window dressing effects so i just want to highlight that but we're going to talk more about that in next week's video uh, let's move into the one hour chart for immediate price action for trading ideas for the overnight trading session. So any pullback into the 500, into 450, 480 uh, to 500 is going to be seen as a buying opportunity for a continuation higher back into the 25,600 and back into the 25,700. Now remember that I said that there's going to be a turbulence zone between 600 and 700. This is going to be a little bit more choppy here, but the more we grind to the upper side, the more we're going to possibly see a continuation, a continuation to the upside um, of following, uh, following this, uh, uh, following this, uh, this stage. All right. So the market is open right now and let's continue with the mini S and P. Uh, we do have, uh, a lot of support here into the 2730. I also marked it on charts. It is a confluence zone. You can see that it is trading. The price is trading right now, uh, at 2750. This is the again the first pullback after a ten week uh, after a ten week rally, and so far we topped off into this prior resistance at the twenty eight hundred zone, and we pulled back about fifty points from that point on. 
Now, depending on how price is going to stabilize around the support level, remember 27.30 is huge support level, a huge support zone. The more the price is going to stay above this area, pullback buys are going to be in play all the way to 28, uh, 2800, and perhaps higher if we break above the 2800 area throughout this whole entire week. If we break below the 2730 area, I think that we're going to be heading lower and this will actually play into a continuation of this down uh, of this down bar. And the next target is going to be at least 50 points from where we are trading right now back into the 2700 tapping onto the 20 SMA into the 7576 zone where it can find uh, support. As long as the price is gravitating above the 2730 to 2735, we could see a positive continuation higher. But be very careful this week because we're uh, basically the line in the sand stays not far away from where the price is trading right now. So that 2730 is going to pretty much be that balancing uh, support level from which above uh, we could see more a uh, positive price action uh, two further targets into the 2800 and if we break below that and stay below that 2700 is going to be quickly attained under those conditions all right let's move on to the daily chart daily chart we had one two three four bar pullback fifth bar pullback uh with a hammer if we trade and navigate through the 2760 uh this will assure us a, a bit of continuation higher this is the 200 simple moving average it has the resistance here into the 2760 uh, but the more we're going to press above the 2760 we may have price that may continue higher over the 80s and back into the 2800. But remember, between 2760 and uh, 2780 is going to be a 20 point turbulence zone, and that's going to be uh, really shaky before it uh, if before it breaks higher. So we, it may be required to have a soft stop, uh, or uh, you know, if you're day trading, or you know, kind of adjust your stop methodology you know the the type of stop that you're using you've got to be a little bit more flexible here tight stops are are not going to work out and play out that well within this area but over this area everything should be resumed into normal trading conditions for a continuation higher above the 2800 now what happens if we break below the 2730 like i said 2730 to 2725 that's going to become the more bearish zone and a continuation lower back into the 2600 20 i'm sorry 2700 is also going to be inevitable at this point and this is also the secondary level of support that we have going on for the overnight trading session uh for the overnight trading session let's move on to uh to the hourly chart and uh, the hourly chart we had the this really big four hour uh, four hour continuation higher into resistance we've moved beyond the 10 exponential the 20 the 34 and we're nearing uh, right here the ultimate resistance for the intraday trading at the 27 uh 55 to 20 2750 actually to 2760 this 10 point turbulence zone right here if we manage to break above 56 uh, we have a nice tradable void continuation all the way to 27, uh, 2766 area and then 2770. And then again, we're going to reach this uh, this tough area. And once we're going to, the more we close more one hour candles above this area and into this area, the more we can have a continuation higher. So I think that's going to play out pretty well. All right, let's move on to NASDAQ and we're going to take it back to the weekly chart. And as you can see right here, 10 bars to the upside, first pullback in 10 weeks, which was a massive rally. This pullback tapped into the 10 exponential moving average. You can see the price is trading right now on the weekly above the 34 and the 50 SMA. And because we're trading in the latter half of the prior week's trading range we're still not yet looking for you know we're still not yet very bullish so we're i remain very neutral i have to see a lot of parameters that are going to be met for long criteria and for short criteria so from the weekly chart this is just a pullback positive that the price has rallied in the last four hours of the trading session on friday and this may be let's say a continuation higher if we hold above the 7,000 level this currently we're trading about 50 points above that high 
The daily chart, hammer, if we trade above the 70 zone, we may have a continuation higher, but keep in mind, we do have a turbulence, turbulence zone here from this prior cluster to the left-hand side, this shop box to the left-hand side that has lasted throughout the month of February. And we also have these moving averages that are gonna create that dynamic resistance level at this point. So this is gonna be a little bit more choppy here. But uh, if we hold strong, if we trigger, and if we try to push higher through the overnight trading session, and this is gonna be the most difficult zone right here. We blast over 71.40, we're back into the 72 and ready for new highs on the year. Uh, as far as long as this week we're holding the 69.60, we should be looking positive. If we break below the 69.60 area, 68.50 is going to be inevitable uh, because we have a confluence zone here. And this is, again, you know, pretty much a consistent tradable void. So if we break 68, we're back to uh, 68.50 and 6800. This is going to be the test area from which we can look at another pullback buy scenario from uh, from the swing trade perspective. Let's move on to the hourly chart for immediate price action uh, uh, and uh, decisions. And we have four hours to the upside. We had pullback. Right now, the pullback zone is going to be the 7130. As long as 7130 is going to hold, we could see another rotation that may happen off this point. And we ultimately want to see the 7070 area pushed through and dissolved. Uh, for the price to move higher back into the 7100. All right, let's move on to Russell. And we're going to take it with the weekly chart. And uh, as you can see, the weekly chart, Russell a little bit weaker. Notice that it had nine weeks to the upside, actually 10 weeks to the upside. And then on the 10th week, it started to show a little bit of bearishness. You can see here that it was the first index to pull back and visit the 34 simple moving average and back into the minor support from this whole cluster October through December last year. Uh, it didn't find support he support here. It actually breached the low, entering into a weekly sell setup that took the price lower back into the next technical level, which is the 1520 uh, 20 zone exactly where this 10 exponential moving average is and also coincides with these prior lows right here uh, with these support levels from February, March and April of last year. So this is going to be, a, a, as you can see, the price right now is trading in the latter half of prior weekly bar. It's still stabilizing. It's just balancing out off the 10 exponential moving average. I know it's still very early, it's only eight minutes into the trading day, but still pretty weak at this point. 1525 is where the price uh, is where the price support is. If we break uh, the 1517 level, we're going to see a leg down guaranteed almost all the way into the 1490s. So we do have a tradable void below that, and that is contingent on breaking this prior uh, last week's prior uh, last week's low of 1517 if we manage to work ourselves back up and if the price is going to manage to work back up back into the 50 and if we hold this area but this is contingent on holding the 1517 area intact uh, as long as we hold this area, we can see a push higher back into the 1558 to 1560. That's where the next resistance area is. And that's where the next decision is going to lie. Because if we burst through this area, we may have a continuation back into the 80s and back into the 1600s. All right, let's take it down to the daily, uh, daily chart hammer. Not as... Um, uh, strong as uh, the three indices, the m &E, SMP, Dow, and NASDAQ, but not, uh, but uh, we're still having this nice hammer candle here uh, after the roll that was set up. And if we break again, this is suggestive of a break above this prior high right here. So if we see a print of 1532 to 1533, Price may continue higher into the 1550, even in the overnight trading session and going into tomorrow's trading session. And this is going to be the next level of decision at the 1550 level for continuation higher, 10 points higher. So it's going to move in 10 point increments because it's so choppy at this point. But if we manage to navigate from 15, uh, from 1550 to 1560, there's no doubt about it. We're going to have to continue to the next tradable void of 1600. Immediate price action. Um, 
decision, well, we have rotated five, four hours to the upside from the lows on Friday from noon, and we're back into resistance right here into the 30 area. So it is important for the price to try to take out this 30 to 33 level, and I think it's on its way to the next tradable void all the way into the 1540 and 1550 area. All right, let's... Uh, move on to uh, gold we just closed a trading gold and uh, we just uh, uh, booked some really nice profits uh, 10 point profits 10 plus point profits and uh, we're gonna be looking for the next trading decision weekly chart very appealing so if we're gonna trade above the 1300 again we may be looking at another uh, at another push to the upside but this is contingent on a break of the exact price of 1301.5 so this is what we're going to be looking for i'm going to set an alert right here pull back buys over 1301.5 may represent a buying opportunity from the weekly perspective and again the stop is going to have to be below this low right here again this is a weekly uh and uh let's place the alerts here and again we have a tradable void back into the 13 uh 1320 and 1335 all right so the daily chart like i said we had the first area achieved you could see it right here back into resistance cluster we were seeing a little bit of a pullback here uh the one hour chart is not uh not a steep of a pullback we're just pulled back to the 10 exponential moving average we had a really nice blast on friday with a continuation higher into the key area of 1300 also psychological now pull back about two points below that and we're going to have to wait for another decision on it. All right, let's move on to crude. Crude had quite a real nice four hour reversal uh, that happened through lunchtime, um, uh, through, throughout the lunchtime period at the end of the trading session, actually, just right after lunchtime, late lunch, that had this really nice four hour rotation. Uh, the trigger point was into the 5540 area continuation higher it blasted through the first area of resistance which is which was actually the 5560 to 5580 blasting higher into the 200 simple moving average this is something that I've already posted on Twitter I know some of you guys that are in my trading room already took this trade and you guys are in this trade as we speak right now so uh on the uh one hour uh perspective is still holding the 56 dollar area it just needs to digest you can see that the fight here uh is uh, continue uh, the fight here continues to be uh from this prior cluster area from uh from two weeks ago and uh, if and when we're going to digest through uh the 5620 and also the fact that we're if we're going to be uh basing at these highs it, between 56 and 56 25 we're just gonna take out this uh, it's it's basically gonna be uh uh the 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 digestion of this uh 200 simple moving average and it's just gonna be a sign that we're ready to blast higher back into the 57 dollars or so all right uh look at the bonds going into this uh, trading week and we're gonna pull them um, we're gonna pull actually the weekly charts right here uh if the weekly is gonna uh if the weekly is gonna move above the high of 146.07 um and i do have a um uh, an alert here 146.10 which provides confirmation with that if we move above this area, we shouldn't have any issues uh, in a continuation higher into the 147.07 and back into the 147.16 and even back into the 148 area. So these are, uh, this is the bonds. Okay, uh, natural gas, we trailed out of natural gas when we opened, uh, but we are still gonna be looking for another leg and opportunity. We had a really nice continuation higher, three bars. We had our first target right here into the 2.8. Uh, and uh, right now we're looking for, uh, we're looking for, um, for a pullback. We're gonna have to see how this weekly is gonna digest, how the price is gonna digest this 200 simple moving average. We're gonna to try to move back above the 2.895. We're gonna start moving higher. And if we break below 2.80, guess what? We're gonna start pulling back. So this is gonna be a big line in the sand here, a big decision factor. 
Uh, so I'm gonna put an alert for below because if we move below, I, I think that we're gonna go back to uh, at least into the 2.7 area, if not onto the 2.6. Uh, all right, so copper, let's take, check out copper here for the week. This is the weekly chart once again. Uh, copper pullback, two weeks, uh, two week pullback. If we take out the 2.87, the next area of support is going to going to be into this confluence zone here, into the 2.8459. Uh, right now, still very early in the week. Again, it's only 6.16 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and let's move it to the daily chart. Daily chart today, immediate price action. If we move above 2.9192, I'm going to create a quick alert here. Uh, we're going to be ready to move higher. And the next target is going to be into the 2.95 and back into these highs of 2.97. All right, I know a lot of you have requested charts of wheat, ZW, is it, is it the time to buy wheat, okay? They have been on a roll to the downside. Let's check out the monthly chart right here. So you could see here that for the whole, I mean, very rough month of February, March still within the first, uh, first week of trading, and we're still, you know, we're still back into the support level. So still a red uh, week last week. So uh, is it time to buy wheat? Well, I'm not going to buy anything just yet. Uh, I don't see any massive volume that would point us to uh, to the, that point in time where we could say, yeah, you know what? We, we just had this blast. You know, sellers are done. It's ready for that rotation. I think we got to take it very slowly. The weekly chart, again, let's not ignore the fact that we're still trading below uh, below the 200 moving average. Is it, is it, does it look good for another short? No. Uh, does it look good for a long? No. So I'm not going to do anything with it just yet. I, all I know is that the chart is, uh, what the chart is telling us is that 400 is tons of support right here. We're still trading into the 438 and we still don't have any signs of reversal just yet. So this is going to be, uh, uh, this is going to be on a watch. Uh, perhaps if we're going to get a big massive sell to the downside. In fact, I saw something on the hourly chart on Friday. You see this, this is the first, you know, time where I saw, uh, quite some substantial volatility here into, into wheat with a little bit higher volume. So I'm going to, I'm going to be waiting, uh, to see if we have anything setting up. Uh, we had a really mild four hour reversal, but we had that before and we really didn't end well. So we still continue lower with the price is still, you can see the moving averages are fanned out. The massive downtrend is still on the way. So no signs for me to leg into, uh, leg into this. All right. Another question was about cord and is it time for a swing long in corn? And that was the question from Sam. Uh, and uh, he sent the email on Friday. Uh, so let's take it down to the monthly chart. Monthly chart very much sideways. In fact, you could see that, you know, corn has not done much if you're looking at the 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. So nothing spectacular there. Weekly charts, just, you know, very much sideways. Uh, not a lot of uh, velocity in price, but pull back here. I think that we may still continue a little bit lower back into the, uh, back into the, uh, 360 or 350 to me, 350 is going to be appealing for a buy. So 350, I would look for a buy around the 350, still not ready yet. I also saw the same thing that I saw. Let me put it on the hourly chart. I saw also saw the same thing on Friday that I saw in wheat. And that is some volatility that came in here at noon and you could see it uh, with a spike in volume as well. I'm gonna have it on watch, but uh, still I don't see anything setting up quite yet. Um, we had pre pre previously had some four hour rotations. We're far away from the 200 simple moving average. Not a trade of my, of my choice. Uh, Joanna from North Carolina, she was asking about soybean CS, okay. And uh, let's take it back to the weekly right here. So the weekly chart still trading on support into the 892 zone. From the day trade perspective, you know, if you like to day trade, uh, you know, commodities, 
Um, these are, uh, they have been setting up quite nicely. Uh, I, I, I don't really specialize in, uh, but a chart pattern is a chart pattern, but I, they're not my go-to trading instrument, uh, uh, you know, so let's just say that. Uh, but we're still trading into support here into the 890. Uh, on the weekly chart, it's no time to short and no time to go long. We still have some support right here. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that we're trading way below the 200 simple moving average. We're trying to stabilize and be above the 900 level. I don't see any trade uh, as, uh, as of right now. All right, this is all for tonight. Thanks so much for joining me. And uh, if you want to find out more about Trade Out Loud, you could visit our website. It is tradeoutloud.com. And if you wish to join our trading room, we have a live trading room where we day trade uh, and swing trade futures and we swing trade stocks. If you're interested in finding more about our trading room, it is tradeoutloud.com forward slash live. Uh, trading room and we also have an upcoming class it is the five day power income futures day trading class it starts on march 25th if you want to find out more info on that you could visit our website under education or you can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com to find out more about the class class curriculum and how this uh, trading course can actually change the way you trade and how it can help you Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great, fantastic week. Don't forget that on Friday, we have the quadruple witching option expiration, and things are going to be a little bit more choppy this week than usual. Have a great trading week.